Hello everybody and welcome to the <coughs> NPTEL online course on microelectronics devices to circuits. We start today's lecture uh, with the understanding of BJT as a switch and then conclude with uh, Ebert's mole model of BJT. I will also give you a brief introduction of Gamal Poon model which is generally used in spice uh, for spice purposes uh, which is a circuit simulator. Uh, but before we move forward, let me recapitulate what we did earlier. We had a look into the various small signal models available to us, out of which we had conclusively looked into common emitter, common base and common collector configuration. Uh, we have also seen in common emitter, if we put a emitter resistance in series to the emitter port, uh, it increases the stability and decreases the gain. So, that is what we have done in the previous uh, lectures. We will start today uh, to look into BJT as a switch and then uh, maybe uh, look into Ebert's modal model at a later time, right. So, just to uh, the outline of this uh, presentation or this set of presentations will be that uh, we will be looking BJT as a switch. So, uh, can we use BJT for the purpose of switch, right? And uh, the requirement is that whenever we have uh, uh, switched networks can we use BJT to do that, right? Or can we use uh, BJT to take care of those switch networks? We will be looking at Ebert modal model and its equations. So, again, as I discussed with you, uh, that uh, <coughs> small signal model and uh, it is basically a circuit simulation model, and therefore, uh, we will be able to directly port these equations into circuits uh, for the purpose of circuit simulation. Then uh, we will be looking at normal mode of operation of transistor which we have already seen and then the inverse mode and then we will be putting the Ebert's mole model for NPN as well as PNP transistor and then recapitulate uh, the whole thing once again, which means that we will be looking into these detailed analysis uh, once again. Now, <coughs> uh, the, we will be looking first of all BGT as a switch, right? that is the first uh, assignment or uh, the first part um, in this in this uh, idea and uh, th they have been used uh, for all your transistor transistor logic which is basically TTL. So, let us see how uh, BJT can work as a switch. Now, uh, so, so we, we remember if we, we all uh, we just now discussed and we saw that when the base emitter voltage goes beyond 0.7 uh, which is basically for silicon, uh, then we would expect to see it become forward biased and as a result it will emit large number of electrons if it is an NPN transistor and the device will be in on state, right. And it will be in off state provided the base to emitter voltage is lower than 0.7 as such. So, if you are able to make a transition of the base to emitter voltage from 0.7 upwards to below, I can move from saturation to cutoff and vice versa. Consider this circuit which you see in front of you, this circuit, right, where I am giving an input voltage V i, right. So, this means that we have we are giving a input voltage which is V i and this will be a sum of DC and AC bias. So, the DC bias will be helpful for uh, for uh, uh, choosing the Q point and the AC bias will be actually giving you the switching characteristics. So, whenever my so this R B and R C this R B and this R C are the resistance which is there in the base side and the collector side of this B J T. Uh, the, they are there so that excessive current does not flow through BJT and burn it out. So, if, if let us suppose this got shorted, RB was shorted, then if your source uh, which is a voltage source, a DC voltage source because of some problem or other uh, gives you a large current suddenly, then the chances are that the BJT will burn out and therefore, in order to ensure that it does not burn out, we give you RB value here. So, this RB, RC and the beta of the transistor fixes the uh, fixes up the Q point of the transistor. So, it gives me a fixed value of VCE and IC, right? It gives me that value. Where should you bias so that it acts as a, acts as a, uh, acts as a switch uh, that we need to find out how, how do you bias it. So, if you plot in a common emitter configuration for various values of uh, VCE versus IC if you plot, right? Then for this is for various values of IB I think, right? So, this is IB 1, IB2 and so on and so forth, IB4, IB3, and this is basically IC, and this is your VCE. So this is becomes your IC4, 
right. This becomes here IC 3, this becomes here IC 2 and this becomes here IC 1. So, this is your saturation region almost and this is your active region. Active region, this is your saturation region. So, you have again another suppose you have a current source which is somewhere here. So, typically for to be used as a switch, if you bias it somewhere here, let us suppose, which we generally do if you are using it as an amplifier, suppose use the Q point, then you are, so, so if you look at the Q point, then I will just give you the region. So, this is the, so this is your, let me show you using a different color maybe, and I will just show you the different color combination and uh, maybe let me use this. Now, this part, right, this part which you see as I discussed with you is basically your saturation, right. And now, this part, right, is your, sorry, this part is your active. this is active and below this part, below this part, this is all cut off and this I B is, I B is approximately equals to 0 or very close to 0. So, if you bias your device in such a manner that, uh, uh, that uh, you end up having uh, uh, your, your Q point is somewhere here, then you can understand that even if I give a small signal input, uh, I will not be able to cross the cutoff point. So, at the positive half cycle there is surely no, no, no reason, negative half cycle also my I B will just come from I B 4 to I B 2. So, if you bias your device at this Q point, at this Q point, you will never be able to work as a switch, but then you can work as an good amplifier. So, the good idea is that if you want to use it as an amplifier, bias is by using external DC sources in such a manner that it is somewhere in the middle of the active region, not very very far from saturation is cut off. You want to use it as a switch, then bias it somewhere maybe here or maybe somewhere here. Then in the positive half cycle, agree nothing will happen, but the negative half cycle you enter into cutoff, right. So, when your input is uh, moving in the negative half cycle, the output is also going to the negative half cycle, then you are entering into cutoff limit, right. So, you can do cutoff. So, but for to, to do that you have to your, your V C E may be typically large, but they need to ensure your I C to be small. So, this I C is small I C. This small I C can only be done if you have I B small. How do you do that? I B, how can you make your I B uh, go very, very small? Well, very simple and straightforward. Uh, if you look at this point, make your R B uh, very large. So, when you make it R B very large, you ensure that your I B falls down drastically, right. And then as a result, you will you will have a much, much lower value of R B, uh, much, much lower value of I B available with you. As a result, you are you will be able to go into cutoff. Now, the idea therefore, is that uh, when you go from therefore, active to cutoff, right, without going into saturation, we define that to be as a switch, right. So, we define switch to be from active to, to cut off, right and then vice versa. So, from cut off to active again uh, you, you want to go to it. Now, you will uh, obvious question asked is uh, can BJT be used for high frequency application which means that can I use this switch uh, when the input frequency is typically very high. The answer is uh, it is it's difficult, it is pretty difficult and the reason being that how does one go from uh, on to off state. We go via changing the emitter base junction from forward to reverse bias and then from reverse to forward. Now, uh, there is always a finite amount of time uh, which has to be given to the diode, p n junction diode in this case, such that you allow for the systems or the charge carriers to come back to its original position. This is known as reverse recovery time, right. Uh, we will know we will not discuss any further than this at this stage, but I will give you a brief idea what I was talking about. So, let us suppose I have a I have a p n junction right. So, assume this to be as emitter and this to be as base. So, I have got n p n. So, this is n and this is p let us suppose I have a depletion region here. Now, what I do is I first of all 
um, I, I first of all forward bias it. So, I do like, say, like this as I do it uh, current flows and there is no problem. Then what I do I have to reverse bias it. So, what I do I just remove this part and I add something like this. I, once I reverse bias it uh, this again the, the, the current stops because the depletion thickness becomes quite large and there is no current. And then we again go from reverse to forward right. Once I do it then the this has to go down this limit has to go down. How it can go down provided the charge carriers from both sides move across the boundary meteorological boundary and thereby uh, form the uh, remove the depletion region. This requires a finite amount of time and that is the reason you have to give sort of a minimum cooling period for the diode. So, that it basically moves from on to off state and off to on state. So, uh, so, so uh, typically BJTs cannot for this simple reason but there are other reasons also, but this is one of the reasons why you cannot work it at a very very high frequency right at typically gigahertz or terahertz you cannot work with BJT. The reason is you do have a problem that a minimum amount of time has to be given to the transistor in uh, for, for the BJT for the you know, recovery of the time right. So, that is the reason there is always a limit to the frequency at which the BJT can work as a switch. So, if you look at this, uh, this uh, figure or in this equations you can see that I B the base current can be given as V i, V i is the input voltage minus V b e, minus V b e y because uh, uh, this is the, so I am concentrating at this place right. So, it is something like this now that I have R b right and then this right and then you have got V i. So, V i minus V b e right minus V b e divided by R b is your I b. So, this is your I b. Right. So, I c will be equals to beta times I b with straightforward way of looking at it and therefore, if you multiply this I c with R c and then V c will be equals to V c c minus I c R c and I will get from this equation the value of V c which is the collector voltage available with me. Therefore, as you can remember I c sat from here also you can see I c sat will be equals to V c c minus V c sat by R c. Now, I will ask you where, where is this sat uh, or from where I can get the sat value. Remember if you remember uh, the voltage transfer characteristics which we are studying right and we were studying like this and then it was going like this and we define this to be my active this was active this was uh, cut off and this was sort of edge of saturation. We started with saturation from here and this was EOS or the edge of saturation where you have a negative cut off uh, with you. So, this is your input and this is your output right. So, this was the active region this is the active region and this is the edge of saturation. So, I get uh, this this is approximately 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 voltage V C E sat. So, V C E sat is approximately equals to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 volts fine. Uh, with this knowledge I say that I C sat which is the saturated collector current will be equals to VCC VCC right uh, minus VC sat by RC fine which means that uh, it is basically VCC minus VC sat minus RC VC sat will be typically very small 0.3 maybe. So, I get VCC so if you look at edge of saturation minus 0.3 divided by RC right I get VCC minus 0.3 divided by RC and therefore, I get VCE sat approximately if I say 0 0.2 I get beta force is equal to IC sat by IB and IB equals to IC by beta IB. So, that is very straightforward looking at it, but I wanted to make it clear that one important point here that therefore, IC if you remember is nothing but VCC minus uh, VC sat remember divided by RB, RC, RB base current right R B uh, no R C I think sorry R C right. Now, so, so the obvious question asked is uh, how can you maximize I C because then only get large currents is that you make this was as close to 0 as possible right. So, the typically the maximum value of I C will be V C C by R C fine that is the maximum value of. So, I C max can be written as V C C by R C right and that is the reason you always get for example, in this case when you when you have to have a switch uh, you have to ensure that the, the current actually moves from 
the I C value moves from a relatively high value to relatively low values uh, when you move from a, when you move from active region to uh, to edge of saturation. In the edge of saturation, the value will be relatively very very small, right? So this is you have to keep in mind as far as switching is concerned or switching uh, understanding switching is concerned. We now come to what is uh, an important uh, terminology we use it in in bipolar technology and that is known as an Ebers mole model right it is known as Ebers mole model also referred to as EMM or EM model right EM model. So, by two scientists Ebers and moles the Ebers mole model is a large signal model for BJT unlike the previous models uh, which is T and pi a T and pi this is basically a large signal which means that we do not restrict ourselves to small changes in the input, but we are looking into large changes in the input and then trying to predict the output voltage or current from this EM model. This, this EM model is basically a low frequency, so it is not even high frequency model, it is a low frequency model and uh, the, what it does is that it takes care of BJT as a two uh, junction device, so it is EB and CB device. So, I have got two junctions emitter base and uh, collector base junction right. Therefore, uh, what what the idea of Ebers mole was that therefore everything can be broken down into set of two currents, one current flowing through emitter base, another flowing through collector and base, right? This is two things, and also uh, two uh, other component which depends on the emitter base junction and collector base junction. So, and he therefore told that the total terminal currents IC, IB, and IE. Uh, it will be a uh, weighted sum or superposition of these two junction currents E B junction and C B junction. So, so that is what we are saying that the, the Ebert's mole equation is that that I E and I C are described by resembling diode relationship plus the coupling between the properties of emitter and collector right. So, this is the reason why we do an Ebert's mole model as such. Let us see how a Ebert's mole model, model looks looks like right. Now, <coughs> look at the, so, so this is the, so this is again a three, it behaves like a three terminal device. I have a base, I have a collector and I have an emitter here E, E right an emitter here and uh, uh, so it is basically again as I discussed with you, it is a three terminal device. Now, I have current I B flowing into the base, collector I E and I E. So, it is basically an N P N transistor design which we are trying to do. Now, as you enter this point, this side is emitter right and this is collector. So, this is emitter and this is collector right. Now, if you look very carefully, this is basically emitter base junction this one and this is collector base junction right. Emitter base junction is defined by a, a, a diode, right? Whose whose uh, uh, whose uh, uh, one side, the p side is connected to base because it's n p n n p n. So this is base. So this this will be diode equation, right? And as a result, you will get a DE. So why we get ID here? I'll just show you why we get it. So if you plot a NPN right in PN and if you look from this side from the base side right then it will be if you want to forward bias it it will be something like this right and that is the reason we are showing you that by this statement here. So, this is the reason we see ID here and collect uh, base to collector is shown in this manner. So, from fr because it is an NPN so, the diode will be in this direction and it will be in this direction that is what you are seeing right. So, both are both P are connected towards base and both n connected toward collector and emitter. Uh, what is alpha f into I d right alpha f into I d I d e I d e is uh, uh, emitter current. So, I d e is this one emitter current which you see if you multiply this with alpha you get a so remember alpha was equals to I c by I e fine. So, I can define I c to be equals to alpha i e. that is what you have done. So, alpha f forward current multiply i e even i d e right. So, this you multiply with this one you get this and similarly alpha into i d c will give you the value of uh, collector current right. So, I therefore see therefore you see the direction of the collector current is also and the emitter current is also shown in this manner and this manner right and you can, you can, you can predict the reason why is it like that for all practical purposes. So, I get from here 
I e which is looking from this side I e equals to I d e which is so I e is this side I d e is this side and since I d c is in the opposite direction I get minus alpha r times I d c alpha r is basically your uh, your um, this thing uh, reverse uh, current gain right and I c will be equals to minus I d c plus alpha f into I d minus I d c because the direction of current is reverse therefore, I can finally, fi finally find out since I e equals to I b plus I c I b will be 1 minus alpha f I d e plus 1 minus alpha r into I d c fine. So, this is the value of I b which he gets as such. So, therefore, if you say alpha f and alpha r if both are equals to 1 then uh, I b equals to 0 and therefore, I c equals to I fine but this is not true because alpha f which is the forward gain and alpha r which is the reverse gain uh, will never be equal to each other there will be a large difference between the two and therefore this inequality that ib equals to 0 will not hold good right and that that that, that is a almost a sure shot uh, sort of a network so using that network which we have which we just now saw uh, we can write down the basic equations of ebermol's model ebert's mole model the first equation is of course as we have discussed this one which is ide equals to isc uh, vbe e to the power vbe by vt minus 1 idc is equals to isc to the power vbc by vt minus 1 then ie IE, if you look very closely is this is basically your um, is 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 ide right and therefore i get this minus this right is and then i get this minus this we get then beta f forward and resistance and negative resistance beta r and then we get from these equations the value of i b i e i b and i c right mm, and we see that uh, if you look very carefully here that base to collector junction is always in a forward uh, mm, in a forward active region uh, i v b c will be quite large and negative right as a result this will all vanish so i will be only left with minus plus i s fine. So, I s by alpha uh, plus I s. So, I will get I s common. So, I will get I s common right. I get uh, 1 by alpha multiplied by e to the power v b e by v t minus 1 right. We will get we can get like this something like this for, for our understanding purposes. Same thing happens if you take negative value for your ever small model ok. So, so we have therefore understood uh, the basic fundamental principles of the Ebers-Mull model. We have also understood uh, how Ebers-Mull model work. Uh, we have also understood how does a BJT uh, uh, bipolar transformator can be removed and we can replace it by its corresponding uh, model file. And provided we are able to sustain these equations within the model, right? And we are able to achieve a sustained value of these uh, model files. Uh, before we move forward to inverse and uh, this thing, uh, let me let me give you a Ebers model model for NPN and PNP transistor. Uh, Ebers model model for NPN and PNP. So, if this is basically a PNP, right? This is PNP. This is basically an NPN, right? NPN is relatively easy to handle, so I can do it. IE is equals to IF, um, IF plus alpha I IR. Right, and similarly, I C can be written as alpha n I F minus of because it's a reverse bias minus I R. Right, because in negative side there is no gain uh, which is available uh, uh, at this transistor at N P N, but for P N P you do have a gain available, and therefore this comes out to be like this, right? And I get alpha I F plus alpha I R as the value of the. Um, the base collector current right. Now, we have also already discussed um, transistor operating in normal mode or forward active mode. Uh, just to give you a brief insight what will happen in reality, we will see that uh, as I discussed with you that the minority current carrier will actually go down linearly from emitter base to collector base and it will go to such a low value at almost near this thing will go to 0 because the collector will be removing all the electrons from the junction and as a result this will go to 0. So, that is quite uh, quite uh, difficult, but since uh, 
you do have recombination in the base side therefore, this will ideally will not be a straight line, but will be slightly bend in this manner uh, and, and as a result uh, because of the recombination and as a result you will have a bending parameter there. So, this uh, so if you see at this model this one it is emitter base collector. So, in the emitter base collector this V E B is nothing but the base to emitter forward resistance I F is the forward current and alpha n into I f is basically the collector current which is which is to be developed or which has to be developed right. With this idea let me recapitulate of what we done in this module. Uh, we looked into uh, Ebert's mode model and uh, tried to estimate the currents for all modes of operation of BJT. Uh, please ensure that the current will be typically very high in active region almost 0 in the uh, lab region and it will be moderately good near the other regions right. So, at the, at the, at, as a in the saturation region it will be typically very relatively high, but fall very fast active region it will be typically very high, but remain in that high position for quite a long time until and unless an external force is pulling the uh, node down and cutoff is the region where the effective current is approximately equals to 0. Please take my mind it is effective resistance and uh, approximate resistance goes to 0. The real resistance might not even go to 0 at any point of time. Uh, so, as I discussed with you Ebermole model is an elegant way of expressing uh, 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 a circuit uh, right and then uh, what we have neglected in Ebermole is we have neglected the effective base width model right. So, please keep this in mind when we do the next time we will be using the effective base width model which means that the when we remember when we are reverse uh, reverse biasing the centric, uh, uh, collector base junction uh, the effective base width was reducing right. So, it was going down and as a result there were certain issues which were formed out which were not addressed by the Ebert's mole model right and therefore, all your second order effects and everything which is emanating from Ebert's mole model need to be questioned and we need to look into those facts in a detailed in a detailed fashion. So, Ebert's mole model actually fails when you want to have a second order effects coming into picture right. So, Ebert's mole model does not work very good in that case when you have second order. In that case what works is basically my uh, Gamal right Gamal Poon's model fine. You should, you should look at Gamal Poon's, Poon's model and uh, this is much more robust model at high frequency uh, at, at very high frequency uh, domain right. And this is what we have learned from our previous uh, understanding or statements, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, with this, uh, uh, let me uh, let me also therefore uh, we have therefore taken care of two important points in this lecture. The first point is that we have looked into transistor as a, the trans BJT as a switch, so I can switch uh, active to cutoff and cutoff to active vice versa by fast movement of an external peripheral source. Uh, we have also seen. Uh, the Ebert's mole model and how can it be integrated with circuit analysis. Uh, we will we also looked into basic Gaman pool will Gaman pool will come to later on if time permits, but we have looked into those facts and we were able to sustain a much better uh, design for a uh, uh, BJT based design. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.